I'm a little nervous up here, but uh, you're all beautiful and I see several of my friends out there and other beautiful faces, people from all over the world. I, I want to start off by actually going over what is happening to my sister right now. She's currently in a detention center in Richmond, California at the West County Detention Facility. And I want to repeat to all of you what the Department of Homeland Security told my sister. She said, frankly, Your Honor, she has to stop blaming her boyfriends for her poor behavior and take all the responsibility herself, uttered Aaron Lopez, the Department of Homeland Security attorney, who re-traumatized my sister, a survivor of domestic violence at 630 Sansom Street. A day goes by three a week. Her judgment struggled to trickle down my throat as I attempted to swallow the words she effortlessly spoke. My mother, my sister, my other sister, all undocumented, all survivors of intimate partner and state sanctioned violence. On November 10th, two days after Donald Trump had been elected as President of the United States, and 262 days uh, since my sister Yasmin Guiliana Elias was detained because of an inconclusive urine test, I found myself gasping at the walls, closing in on our families and other families like mine, waiting for answers. From a young age, my sister learned that love wasn't love unless her body was being conquered and unless she was being beaten to near death. The following words are directly from my sister, who is in the inside the confines of the West County Detention Facility in Richmond, California. I hate being here. It's dirty as hell in here. They're very rude. They throw the toilet paper rolls at us. Sometimes we can't brush our teeth because they don't give us a chance. The cop asks why we're fighting our case. Says we should go back to Mexico, even though not all of us are from Mexico. The food looks like they have maggots in there. And to be honest, there are days I just want to give up. There's days when I wake up not wanting to be here, that I want to send ICE a request telling them I want to go back to Mexico, even though I haven't been there since I was four years old. Because being locked up almost 23 hours a day, not being able to do anything, and only sit in a small room, I think it's hard. Remembering everything is what is hard on me, being in here. Seeing my family through a glass window, calling them once a week, it's just a lost straw for me. Not being able to kiss and hug my boys and my family when they are right here, it just breaks me into pieces. It's hard to remember to go back to what life was before being called out in court, telling me that I was only thinking about myself. To me, it's not true because the only things I was doing was trying to fix my problems, trying to find a solution to everything so I wouldn't hurt anyone. And then her son, Jeremiah, who was 12 years old when he wrote this, when he turned 13 while his mother was in prison, he said, since my mom got detained, I have been feeling sad and it's hard for me to focus on school. I really need my mom to come back. Adults think I need medicine, counselors, and social workers, but all I need right now is my mom. And that's what I wanted to leave all of you with, are his words. Because I think we often tend to think that the only good immigrant is an educated immigrant, or the immigrant who never does any wrong. But there are immigrants who commit mistakes, like my sister, who has been a victim of domestic violence, and we criminalize her as well. When Judge Simpson, Judge Fox Simpson from the ICE office here in San Francisco, and Department of Homeland Security, this attorney, Aaron Lopez, gave her that sentence and denied her bond. It wasn't just against her. It was against the 400,000 other immigrants that are detained every year in the United States. And this was prior to Trump's administration. This was also under the Obama administration. And 60% of those detainees are housed in for-profit centers like the GEO Group and the, Corporation, the Corrections Corporation of America. And then I also want you all to have a quote by Frederick Douglass. Where justice is denied, where poverty is enforced, where ignorance prevails, and where any one class is made to feel that society is an organized conspiracy to oppress, rob, and degrade them, 
neither persons nor property will be saved. And from Palestine to Mexico, all the walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico, all the walls have got to go. From Palestine to Mexico, all the walls have got to go. Thank you. I have one more announcement, and this is on behalf of the East Bay Immigrant Youth Coalition. Uh, EBIYC is on the brink of launching our Immigrant Liberation Project to orient our undocumented community members in Know Your Rights and provide access to our Media Watch hotline. This project aims to expand grassroots efforts to organize immigrant people and citizens alike to work together to fight ICE or Immigration Customs Enforcement. Through this project, immigrant communities will have access to our hotline for if and when they are confronted with ICE and our trained rapid responders will receive text to support immigrant communities. And for anyone who is interested in learning, you can go online and look up East Bay Immigrant Youth Coalition. Thank you, everybody.